Good morning, everyone. Well, my name is Sam Brewer, and I work for a firm called Gem Energy, which is one of the Rudolph Libby companies, and we welcome you here today for our Critical Power Data Center Summit. Um, this is uh, the third conference of its kind that we've held uh, in conjunction with our partner IBM Corporation and Capstone Turbine Corporation, and the first conference of its kind at the University of Toledo uh, in this part of the, the, the country in general. So we've put together an exciting program for you today, and uh, I'm going to be uh, hosting and uh, providing some uh, remarks between speakers here, as well as introducing our speakers. But we have a, uh, an agenda lined up that has uh, you know, several experts in the field of combined heat and power, uh, energy, uh, data center infrastructure, and then we also have some of our past customers like Syracuse University and the University of Toledo here that are going to talk to you about their implementation experience. And then in the afternoon, we have several tours lined up. You're going to see combined heat and power installations at different types of applications that have been implemented over the past 10 years. So you're going to be able to see that this is a mature technology that's ready for implementation today, um, unlike a lot of other types of uh, energy technologies. So um, there are a lot of GEM Energy and Rudolph Libby um, uh, company members in the audience today. I, I would encourage you to ask them questions throughout the tours, uh, ask them clarifying questions on the technical material, and then if you have any questions after the conference, please consult them for, uh, for, for follow-up. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce our host of the conference, uh, the Dean of Engineering of the University of Toledo, uh, Dr. Nagi Naganathan. And uh, he's going to provide you some remarks and uh, welcome you here today. Thank you very much. Good morning. Um, Again, welcome to our college. It's a pleasure to have all of you here today. I remember getting a call from Hussein uh, a couple of months ago, perhaps, and he said, this is something we are thinking of, and how would you like to host it here? I said, I would love to. Uh, this room is designed especially for the purpose so that we can have the, this kind of dialogue between the industry, and I didn't quite understand the scope. <coughs> Otherwise, I would have had a ton of students here. This hall would have exceeded, we would have exceeded the capacity of this hall. Let me tell you a little bit about the college and the university. Again, this is my 26th year at the university, so, I'm, uh, so I've had the pleasure of getting to know many people around Toledo. And this has been a great shift in terms of what this university was when I joined versus what it is today. We pride ourselves as a very engaged university. And by our mission, we really focus on the outreach component. That is something we make uh, very obvious in what we do every day. Just about the university, we are about 21,500 students. We have over 400 different graduate and undergraduate programs. Uh, we are in the Carnegie classification, a high research activity. Uh, we used to be state supported, now we are state assisted. Soon we will be state located university <laughs> at the rate the support is going from the state. And uh, we have more than 5,000 faculty and staff uh, uh, at the university. One thing about the university itself, our outreach mission did not just come about just because of personal interest, it is also the geography and our location and we take that very seriously. We are the sole comprehensive research university in Northwest Ohio and we believe it is important we provide that service to our industry so the regional connection, the industry connection is very very important to us. Another partner is Ohio Northern. They are a small private university. We work with them closely in this particular aspect. So the way there are 16 engineering colleges in the state of Ohio, but our location uh, is unique in that regard in the Northwest uh, quadrant of the state. About the college itself, we have six different departments in anything we do in life. And I think we are going to hear some interesting talks about energy today. There is a constant need to reinvent yourself, otherwise you are going to be out of business. It doesn't matter what you do. And I think that is true for us too, particularly in higher education. There's a lot of dialogue on what's going to happen. Mr. Hirsch and I spoke a little bit a few minutes ago about the various bubbles, and we all have been hearing about the bubble of higher education. So we are conscious of it, and we are sensitive to that. 
So this is about the college and a great deal of changes. Thus, in my time as the dean for the last 12 years or so, I've been the dean of this college. One thing we did is kind of the guiding principle. You know, we are not about recruiting a freshman class. We talk about recruiting a graduating class. And that forced us to change many things about what we do in this college. We believe it's a mindset of success. We need to uh, uh, imprint in our students' minds as they join. Just to show a couple of key metrics, in the early 90s, as a young faculty member, I was blown away when I saw that more than 50% of our freshmen did not become uh, uh, second year students, even at the university, leave alone the college, because we did not do the right impedance matching in terms of what their preparation was, what their background was. Again, we are an open admissions university. By state law, we are required to admit every uh, minimally qualified Ohio citizen to this university. But to get them into any program that they have not carefully chosen or put themselves into, it's obviously a big disadvantage for them. So we did a lot of rethinking and we worked with the university. I'm proud to add today more than 80% stay at the university. As a matter of fact, last year 90% of the students stayed at the university and continued uh, with their degree programs. Last eight years we have grown. Uh, we put in quality metrics. We, in order to come into engineering, we have selective admission criteria and we carefully look at their preparation and we give them a lot of coaching early on. As a result, now in the last eight years we have grown. This is a record high in terms of our undergraduate enrollment. These are the type of quality metrics. I won't go into all the details. Just to show again, new engineering full-time freshmen have grown up 87% since 2004, since we started putting uh, I mean, new rules on ourselves on how we will behave and how we will participate in higher education. Uh, one of the things we are very proud of, and this is again uh, a unique aspect in this college, we are one of only eight engineering programs in the nation to have a mandatory co-op for all of our engineering science graduates. Every engineering graduate must work for one year in industry before we certify them as a graduate of this college. This is not simply imposing or putting the burden on the students. I have a full-time staff of six, and again, Jim and Rudolph Libby have been an in, you know, integral partner of this initiative. They recruit a lot of our students. They work in, uh, actually the number should be 42 states and 38 countries now. More than 13,000 placements in the last 12 years since we started this program. Uh, one third of Fortune 500. Just last year, there have been 1,300 placements. So it's a very aggressive program. When the economy uh, faltered a little bit three, four years ago, I got proposals on if we should soften our requirements. I said, well, if you we believe in this, this is the time we pull ourselves up, double our efforts, and make sure it happens. Every year over the last three to four years, our placements have been increasing despite the challenges in the economy. And I thank our industry partners for it. These are some of our top employers in terms of placements. Uh, you know, they are obviously the who's who of industries and very household and internationally prominent names. And you can, I think if you might have caught, Rudolph Libby is there as number 15 in terms of the number of placements. So thank you for your support of our program. Our graduate programs have been recognized, again, based on the student quality and also we are beginning to introduce online graduate programs. Uh, one thing I was talking to Dr. Hirsch about is the, um, in the area of energy engineering, we would like to create relevant dialogue, not just technology of engineering, but really how to get the practicing professionals get connected not just to the technology, but also on the economics of energy and how do you create the balance. And it is regional, it is it could be uh, geography, it could be economics, there are many factors in this. We all, this is uh, again in, the term, in terms of research, you know, we are a large college, but we are not a huge college like some of the land grants. Uh, we have more than 3,000 students. Uh, we selected certain areas, we will focus on areas that are serving as well today. We chose them about 10 years ago and we have continued to build on it. The most recent addition is the cybersecurity sensors and network 
and we are, uh, we are slowly bringing a school of computing in this area, but it is not just computer science as a general computer science, but it is going to really look at applications in other areas. You will hear about that uh, more in the near future. Uh, just to want to talk a little bit about energy, uh, you know, there are many aspects of uh, energy engineering that happen in this college. Again, we cannot be everything to everyone. We try to get some critical mass in many of these areas, and these are some of the topics. Uh, in photovoltaics in particular, interestingly, the first solar, which is just outside of Toledo in Perrysburg, that uh, business was incubated in this very building. The solar cells, that is kind of the parent company, uh, was birthed in the engineering complex. It started right behind this Nitschke Hall, which didn't exist uh, until the mid-90s. So uh, we have really become a place for solar research. Uh, again, uh, and then in the area of biofuels, we have made some excellent progress in the last three to four, five years. Uh, we have hired some young faculty who are building a national partnership with industries as well as other universities, as well as federal government in this area. Uh, we have had, uh, no, I know there is uh, small turbines involved. We have a small turbine institute, which is of a different scale. Nevertheless, we are looking at our competencies in certain areas in aerospace, and then seeing how we can work with uh, various technologies. So the same folks are very active in the area of offshore wind energy. So our platform is, our portfolio is broad in this area as well. Uh, this uh, new young man we hired from Texas A&M, and he's, he works in the area of smart grid. So we are trying to get them together to work together. He's an electrical engineer, others are mechanical, others are chemical, and we work across the colleges as well. As well as we talk to people in law and economics, so we are really trying to create a multidisciplinary dialogue around energy within the university. Uh, not only we do the education and the research component, we are active in technology transfer. And these are some of the activities that has happened in the college in the last six or seven years. And this is gaining a lot of momentum. It is not just faculty, it is faculty, staff, and in more importantly, students that are getting involved. So there are always good ideas. How do you go about translating it to practice? And one important element of this is this building next door. You might have seen it uh, when you parked in front of the auditorium. That is the Nitschke Technology Commercialization Complex. Uh, I have been proposing that we need to have a thematic connection, a seamless connection across education, research, and commercialization. So when there was an opportunity, we wrote a grant to the government, got some of the money, and I was able to raise a million dollars to be able to put that building next door. Again, to make it easier for the students to connect in their minds, you are not here just to go through classes, get a degree, you need to think of the full spectrum. And an important piece is the next one. This is, you might have seen some construction in progress, and that is the connector that's going to happen between the auditorium and the commercialization complex to kind of let people walk in there. So you turn to the left, you go to the education and research. You turn to the right, you go to the commercialization. So again, a seamless connection between those aspects. Uh, it is not simply a vestibule, what we plan to do. Uh, again, this is uh, the connection in progress. We expect this space to be ready before uh, uh, December, if not definitely before January. And this is not simply a connector. This is not a rain shelter. We really want it to be a conversation space so that conversations like this can happen in that area. This is meeting between industry and university so that students and faculty are continually assembling with the community in that particular space. And we don't plan these things in vacuum. It is not simply something we incubate in our own minds within the college. I'm very blessed to have a national visiting board that uh, comes together uh, once a year. They are prominent uh, academicians from various colleges and uh, as well as uh, CEOs and senior vice presidents from industries from all over the country. They come once a year and we get to have this dialogue on what are some other things we should be looking to do five years down the line and um, I'm very blessed to have this group. So again it's a pleasure to have all of you here today. You have a very interesting agenda 
And I'm so glad you have chosen to gather here this morning. And again, welcome to our college. Thank you.